Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Poker Showdown, brought to you by Party Poker. I'm your host, Jamie Staples. Interesting uh, interesting conversation I had with Ben on Drew this week, Drew Gonzalez. I think you guys are really going to like it. He's lived an amazing life over the last couple of years and done quite a lot. His life has changed in a huge way. Uh, and it was really interesting to ask him about all of that and what the experience has been like. There's Lounge 10, living the Virgin Islands, playing the World Series of Poker Main Event, uh, living in a stream house in Vancouver, Canada right now uh, with John Party and um, Arlie Shaban. I mean, it was just an awesome, it was an awesome conversation. So make sure you stick around for that. But before we get to that, let's get into some of the latest online poker news. First up, we got to talk about Bill Perkins, uh, a good friend of mine, is next up in the Phil Galfon Challenge. Now, they've already started actually playing this series, and and uh, Bill Perkins went up on the first day. Um, but Galfon coming off, coming back from a 900,000 euro deficit to win the challenge against Benny Vitti, uh, pretty incredible. So the challenge with Bill Perkins, first to notch up 400,000 euros is going to win the challenge. If neither player hits the target in 50,000 hands, then the leader at that stage will be confirmed the winner. So that that is a lot of hands, but 400,000 up, that's going to happen before those 50,000 hands, I think. So uh, there's a side bet of a million dollars posted by Galphon and 250,000 by Perkins. So I think a pretty awesome side bet situation here, four to one odds. I think I still give the edge to Galphon, especially coming off that huge, huge success uh, that he had against Venny Vidi. But, you know, 400,000 is not that much money, like variance in Omaha. Uh, Bill could pick up a quick million euros here. This would be all right. Uh, you can follow all the action on this uh, on Party Poker as well as it's streaming live on Twitch. Uh, Phil Galfon's doing a lot of streaming and stuff, so you can check it out there. Moving on to some of the live poker news, which obviously is not happening uh, live, particularly at the moment. Uh, a lot of this happening online. First, Pablo Brito Silva won the Irish Open Poker main event. The Brazilian came on top of a field of 2,945 entrants. The top prize was 462,000 euros. Six different countries were represented at the eight-handed final table. Brito was heads up against Hungary's Andreas Nemeth, who won 325,000 euros. Heads up battle saw plenty of bluffs and bet sizing with the lead changing hands several times. First ever online version of the event. Uh, and this follows Brito's win in the Party Booker Live Millions South America main event in February. So quite a heater there. I loved this Irish Open online. I thought it was spectacular, amazing. I really enjoyed, uh, you know, like the three or four events a day, there was, there was some real prestige and it really meant a lot. So I didn't win the series, but I cashed the main event, which was cool. And I got, I think, 11th in the $320 six max. So I was pretty happy with, with my performance and uh, can't wait for the next online series, which they're coming up. Uh, WPT Online uh, Poker Masters is going on right now if you're if you're a high roller. So very excited about that. Now into some party poker news. As you've probably heard by now, superstar comedian and actor Kevin Hart partners with Party Poker. Comedian has been friends with Party Poker's partner Rob Young for a considerable amount of time. Having supported the developments of the game for several years, Kevin is a genuine poker enthusiast who truly understands what the game means to millions of others worldwide. Kevin will bring his unwavering passion and dedication to the cause in helping to develop the game further as a partner for Party Poker. Kevin said, I'm here to party. I'm here to make it a good time. It's a community game, and I'm big on community. I'm big on people. More details on Kevin's partnership with Party Poker will be revealed in the new future, and you may see him appear on this show soon. That's true. How crazy is that? Like interviewing Kevin Hart? Guys, I don't even know how to interview people. I'm still figuring that out. I'm going to be talking to Kevin Hart on the podcast. I need some tips. Let me know. Super happy to see Party Poker Hope host this uh, NHS charity tournament. I wasn't able to see the total prize, but maybe the editor can uh, pop that on the screen right there. Uh, half of that prize pool going directly to the NHS. So uh, I thought a fantastic thing to do. Thanks to Party Poker for putting it on, and thanks to the NHS and all the healthcare professionals all around the world, whether uh, you're in the UK or or you know, in, in Europe or, or in North America, it doesn't matter. Wherever you are, thanks to everyone for doing what they can in this difficult time. But now, after we're through the news, let's get into the interview with Drew Gonzalez. Uh, incredible conversation. I think an incredible person and someone that's clearly going to go places. He's already in places, but he's going to continue to go to them. Uh, so without further ado, Drew Gonzalez. This week, joining me on the podcast, I have a legend of the Twitch space, Thirst Lounge participant, uh, all around good guy, Drew Gonzalez. Drew, thanks for joining me on the show. Jamie, thanks for having me. This is super cool. 
So your life has been pretty crazy over the last year and a half, two years. Like we've seen you in a lot of projects on Twitch. Uh, really excited to have you on. I wanted to start with the Thirst Lounge, uh, a project I sort of saw come to fruition. And I thought was so crazy and so cool. So if you wouldn't mind, share with me again in the audience that might not have heard of the project, what exactly was the Thirst Lounge? Wow, what exactly was the Thirst Lounge? <laughs> Buddy, that was the question going in. And it was crazy. I can still to this day remember seeing the audition video, you and Jeff, you know, like we need submissions, Bill Perkins Thirst Lounge, and it was so much hype uh, because going into it, of course, we think uh, Streamboat, you know, yeah. one, two, of course, you know, the two didn't pop off, but... Um, Hurricane for two, yeah, that, that was a tough one. Yeah. But playing poker on a boat was an amazing novelty to me at the time. I know. So, yeah, anyways. Well, that was, that was so cool. So going into it, it was a, a lot of excitement, Bill Perkins, you know, that's really cool. But basically, for those of you who don't know what the Thirst Lounge project is, um, Thirst Lounge is Bill Perkins' Twitch channel that he was running um, for a while, high stakes cash games on the boat. And then he slowed down with the streaming and decided, hey, let's have you know some other people uh, run the channel. And I submitted my video. And at first they were looking for one host, but then they ended up going with 10. Mm. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is mayhem. This is crazy. Yeah. And then before I knew it, we were last, uh, it was like February of last year, we were all on a plane down to, I think initially there was like six or seven of us, but on a plane down to the Virgin Islands to stay in this like house we've never seen before is like some mansion we're like overlooking into the Caribbean and like just these like fairy tale things happening is like, oh, let me, my assistant would do this and all this. It was, it was a different world. Yeah. And it was a crazy opportunity, but got to stream on Bill's channel, got to attempt to stream from the boat multiple times. And, uh, it's given me so much, man. It was a crazy experience. The resources that Bill and the people, like, I mean, just even from the start, you and Jeff, like getting to talk and learn and just be guided, you know, even throughout the year, you know, it was, it, John and I were talking about it just like earlier this morning. I was like, can you believe that we were actually just like living on the island for like a year? <laughs> it's like, what was that? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it was so crazy to think about you hit on something interesting with with Bill, I think, specifically, which is that's really how the project came about. I remember talking about it with him and Jeff Gross, Bill Perkins, Jeff Gross and, and an old colleague of mine named May. And we were kind of just like spitballing about Twitch stuff, like interesting Twitch things. And it it turned into this project and then it just actually happened. Like it's it's a, it's amazing being around Bill with these creative ideas because you'll spitball. And then that's usually where it ends for most people. They're like, oh, wouldn't that be cool? And then it just happens within like a week. We've got a challenge going and like 10 people are going to the island. Just insane, dude. The the whole thing. So very Bill, very yeah, Bill, <laughs> very much. Uh, so I wanted to ask about living on the island for a year. I've, I've been down there before. Uh, pretty crazy to to spend time on an island like that for for an extended period of time. So what were like the best parts of living down there on the island and then what were the worst parts or the the parts you didn't expect would perhaps be difficult hmm. so i would say the best parts of like living on the island and that whole experience is a year of no expenses we had like a food budget and then you know the house is all paid for like whatever you need to stream and make stuff happen so that was definitely ah that was a really cool part the best part i would say is the experience with the other hosts you know what i mean kind mm -hmm. of the the bond like you're all thrown into this same experience nobody knows what's going on and then it's like a lot of questions so you kind of latch together and it's like yo we gotta figure this out like what's going on that that is the best i remember that the most and of course i'm living with john now so him and i got really close among others but the worst part of living on the island is you're like on an island there's these roads are like not even barely meant to be driven on they're like so <laughs> tiny and weird and you kind of can't like 
just, oh, I'm going to go walk to this or I'm going to go do this. It's very like you get island fever. Like we were for the whole year, the majority that we were down there, it's like you're in this house looking at the same people, like running this stream and then you have to create content and you kind island fever is a thing. You like go crazy. You can't even look at the same people. <laughs> you go outside and it's just you just get really, really stir crazy. Yeah, it's for sure a thing. I believe it, man. Yeah, I I a hundred percent believe that. It's not a big place down there, the the Virgin Islands. It's not exactly huge, so I hear you. No, not at all. Uh, and then too, with the island fever, some of you know, depending on the day, somebody else is having. You know, we had some days where there's like some stuff that is kind of like on the cutting room floor, but like we might be able to like do some movie someday. If right. Bill hears that with like some of the behind the scenes stuff that maybe people didn't see and like you know sometimes when re it's it was a like a reality tv show we had john with the uh big brother winner we had adam with the survivor winner mm -hmm. and then we just had all these different personalities and i actually remember to like people are going to be playing games and like feeling each other out and there's a lot of kind of that that goes on when you put together just like a huge group of random people and force them into a spot like a reality show. Right. Yeah. We, when we were picking entrants for us, reality stars or people that had been through the vetting of reality show were just like an easy, like we know that's going to be good for the thirst lounge and like entertainment because they've been through it, man. Like, like celebrity people that have been on reality shows, they've been through the ringer of being selected and like, yeah, you're going to be interesting to, to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so there was some drama behind this. Was there drama? Is that fair to say? There was definitely, oh, buddy, there was definitely some drama behind the scenes, man. There was, I cannot think of one person who did not come into drama last really? year. Yeah. Oh man. I wish it, I, I wish I, there was I a reality can't... show aspect to this where we could see the drama and like just the, the, the I'm telling you, and, yeah. just need to tell Bill. It's like, Bill, look, we, we can reenact this. I don't care who reenacts, whatever. It's like, I'll tell you everything. I was there. Me and uh, I think uh, Maddie Forsyth were the ones that's, and John, we were the top three that spent the most time on the island. So mm -hmm. we've kind of seen all of it. Brando was close, but he came into the project later. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, he saw a lot of it too. It was crazy, buddy. <laughs> i'm gonna have to talk to you sometime about that off off podcast and, and hear some of these yeah. stories um so what what was the highlight of the year in terms of because you guys aren't living there anymore like it, it's not actively happening right um yeah so sort of looking back what do you think the highlight of of that uh project was uh, specifically like with streaming and stuff with your guys channel I would say with the Thirst Lounge channel, the highlight, and I, and I hate to think of something with myself, you know, I was trying, I, I, I want to, there's a thought I have with John and the Venom, but like, as far as our biggest viewership moment and everything, when I got auto bought into the 10K, uh, it was a Power Fest event. It was like a Thursday and there were people who were flying into the island and I was streaming that day. And I was like, ah, oh, let me see if I could get a sweat. There's going to be a bunch of us bills on the island. And I played this 1K Saddie because somebody in chat, some random person I've never seen before, and this has happened twice, mm. they came and was like, oh, you should play this satellite. There's overlay. I was like, overlay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And then yeah, yeah. I was like, whatever. I was like kind of riding high. This was shortly. I was already kind of on an upswing. I had just got fairly recently before this, uh, second next to Dramatic D-Gen in a 50K um, Power Fest. No, it wasn't a Power Fest. It was um, the, there was another series that happened before that. So I was like trending up and I was like, all right, whatever. And I got in this 1K Saddie and for the sweat when everyone arrives and I ended up winning it. It was crazy. And right. it was cool because they were on the way back from the airport and Brando was with him. So we got some footage of Drew just satellited into this 10K. Let's go. And then everybody was pumped. But it auto regged me because I'm not used to playing, you know, any offshore sites. And I was like, there's not a 10K running on a Thursday. Right. I was like, I'll just <laughs> yeah. play this on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then it auto regges me. And then I'm thrown into like my first 10K ever 
not prepared and like i had a moment of like panic i was like and then i like reset and i was like oh my gosh okay just you have nothing to lose literally and we ended up final tabling it we ended up having over four thousand viewers which was crazy because then i won a 20k bankroll challenge or bankroll booster from bill right. we had to get somebody had to hold and organically get up over 2000 viewers and hold for two hours and that 10k run gave me that so i had like the 41k score when i finished eighth at that final table and then i got a 20k bankroll boost so it was kind of like a pretty sick day and yeah that's the most memorable for myself and i think as far as streaming goes i remember that too i remember i remember everyone sitting behind you uh deep mm -hmm. in that run right yeah that was that was a special yeah. moment man that's really cool it was um, so sick i'll never forget that yeah dude that that's a thing what about i just want to ask you quickly about bill perkins galfon challenge going down oh right now gosh. what do you what do you think like you know obviously you're close with bill but galfon mm -hmm. is a goat at plo like what where's your head at on it what do you think about it it's crazy i'll tell you this after what phil did with venny the comeback and everything yeah it's like, and then, you know, Bill and them, you know how Bill is, like, oh, I can play. It was like, boom, okay, great, everyone. They're playing, like, hurry up, get out of bed, and, <laughs> and then get at it. But I was, I was going to put up a tweet, and I was, like, wanting to cheer for Bill, obviously. And I was like, oh, dang, I don't want to root against Phil either. I know. It was, it was tough, but I, I had to, like, come on, buddy, you know, push through, click send. And, you know, I was for sure rooting for Bill, and then I was happy to see Bill immediately, you know, just start trending up. He ended up, I think, like 1,600. So I'm for sure rooting for Bill, but I know Bill and none of the Thirst Challenge people are going to be, like, upset if, like, Phil wins. Right, yeah. I mean, it's it's so hard to root against Phil Galfond in anything. Like, I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. how, how would you do it? Like, he's, he's just too special of a guy. He just pulled off the greatest comeback in poker history in front of everyone Ever. you know so sick man everyone was that telling was him great. to quit too like the poker industry people were like you suck and he mm -hmm. just he stuck it out and crushed it man it's crazy i know i know that there's odds on this phil v bill and maybe if bill ends up calling on some of the thirst lounge people i know that's was like a bill and the thirst lounge i don't know if bill will but there's i think it's four to one odds right you think Bill, with a little momentum here and there, can maybe pull this off or what? I'd give more to Galfond. I'd give more to Galfond than four to one. I would. I, w I want. I want Bill to win. I mean, Bill's been hugely influential in my life. I think Galfond yeah. would be okay if he lost, but I got to give <laughs> Galfond a bigger edge. I do. Yeah, it's. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of us feel that, but there's a, there's a part of us for sure. It's like Bill, come on, Sun Run, just you know, for another fifteen thousand hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so going forward, what is the plan with the Thirst Lounge? Like you guys aren't living there anymore. So uh, is the project sort of continuing loosely as a group or are you guys all gone your separate ways? Or It's, I would say, so Valentine's Day of this year. So like two months ago, almost exactly is when our contract with the Thirst Lounge ended for, for that first year. And we've done some like minor things, but I think it's kind of just like, floating around right now and people ask me all the time when's thirst lounge season two you know what's going on and i tell them the same thing i was like look thirst lounge two could happen tomorrow it depends like how much time bill has to like think about it because even when the thirst lounge was happening i remember like after like a month bill had a graphic up on his twitter thirst lounge canada what do you think you know and then that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it's... yeah <laughs> anything with bill anything can happen so i feel like with everything that's going on now it's gonna if anything's gonna happen it's gonna happen very similar to the way it happened last year i don't think anything would happen till the end of the year mm. you know if there's gonna do like a season two because bill's also kind of thrown around the idea there on twitter about like giving 10 people 100k or two people a million dollar stake and doing something i don't know if he would package that with the thirst lounge but no one knows. No one knows is the answer, I feel like. And Bill doesn't know yet either, but you never know. He'll just, like, pop off. Open-ended. Stay tuned. I like it. Uh, yeah. That's a good... For uh, sure. 
it's a good cliffhang. Um, one of the things I saw sort of leading up to this is World Series of Poker. Uh, you went to play during the year. You played the World Series of Poker main event. What was that experience like? Was that was your first? Was it your first main event? I think it was. Yep, first yeah. main event. So what was what was the feeling like playing that tournament? So I was, so Bill put me in that, you know, in, in that tournament and stuff. Like Thirst Lounge literally gave me so many opportunities last year. It was wild. I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to be some semi baller and, you know, play these tournaments and do all this stuff. And playing the main event, you know, Bill, Bill gave me confidence actually going into that. When I was talking to him about it, I was like, I was thinking about playing it, but, you know, I don't want to use my Thirst Lounge bankroll or anything. And I remember, he just gave me a very positive like response, like you've done well with the project, you know, like um, mentioned like integrity or something, you know, to me, it's like, you seem like you have good integrity, like let's do it. And that kind of started me off on the right foot because then I had like no pressure. I know the money is like, not like Bill's got 20 K in the bank account. He's giving me 10, do, yeah, you know, right, as like, yeah. because of who he was, I was like able to really enjoy the experience because it was, it was, super hype and then even that tournament is just different yes. literally it's it's crazy how, how to think it's actually different but you sit there it's slower people have an energy about them like everybody's in the it's the poker super bowl there's something different man it's magical it's silly and i hear people say it and then until last year when i was sitting there and i'm day one day two i made day three and it's like this is crazy mm. And I actually have a funny story I want to tell you about the main event, my bust out. Okay. Okay. So it was such a cool experience, but on my bust out, well, actually the night before Brando and I were at our B and B and we were just being silly. It's like, I need to practice my flips. So what we did, <laughs> <laughs> what we did was, uh, we were dealing some hands. It was pocket eights versus ace king. Okay. And we were just like dealing flops, like practicing my flips. And what I was doing, I was guessing. I was like, oh, okay, this flop, I want eights. This flop, I want ace king. Just silly stuff. But it was eights versus ace king. Day three, I go back the very next day. I go out eights versus ace king. Oh, my God, man. It was so crazy. I was like, no way. I was like, Brando, you're not going to believe how I busted it. We practiced this spot all last night. So did you and use I blew the it. luck or did you just not pick up the lessons in the practice? Like what happened? I, I'm still trying to figure it out. We've been talking about it for a year now. <laughs> Yeah. you're you're absolutely right about that tournament is like man there is something about it because it's a poker cliche like if you ask a poker player like oh how are the games oh they're good man they're so soft like games are really good right now this tournament is great you hear it and you just kind of brush it off like yeah okay every tournament's great people say it about the main <laughs> events and you're like all right 10k buy-in like it's probably fun it's actually pretty insane like it's pretty good how every table seems to have you know, three or four guys that qualified from their home game league, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere somewhere in the Midwest, and they've come down and they got the representative. It's like everyone's hometown hero is there to try and live the dream. Yeah, it's so special, man. There's nothing else it like is. it. It's, buddy, it's it's so cool. And uh, well, I was gonna say I hope I get to play it again this year, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to getting into that again and positioning myself. Well, now I don't even know the. Uh, PSPC might not happen, but that happened last year too. I won that um, that pass. Oh, there you go, man. So that's a thing, but I guess that's probably up in there as well. In yeah. in terms of will that that happen? Um, so yeah, what 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 do you think going forward in your poker career? I mean, you've already accomplished a lot in terms of experiences. Like you've done these amazing things that people set out to do in their poker life. So what is it that you're you're like working towards with your with your poker career and what would you like to accomplish you know it's interesting because i feel like i don't necessarily have this big like urge or drive is like i need to play the highest stakes i need to beat the best people and stuff like that i feel like at the core of me what uh i'm still very like i enjoy almost thinking that i'm a recreational player you know, I enjoy the idea of I can still have fun playing poker and not be too hard or like like I still study. I was studying before uh, we got on the call here, but um, I just want to be 
I almost feel like I want to say like when it comes to poker, I want to be well rehearsed so that I can educate people to like a certain level and enjoy the game to a certain level. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily, you know, want to be the next Fedor. I just don't think that's my path. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I've over the last three, four years kind of evolved into I used to be poker player that streams to now streamer that plays poker. Yeah, it kind of feels like my current direction a bit. That that makes sense. I think there's a lot of people in Twitch poker that sort of jostle with that question of mm -hmm. because it's not a fun thing to really have this like life pursuit and passion and then kind of like shift it in a way. Uh, so I remember mm -hmm. having a lot of fear in my life about spending so much time streaming and giving up on sort of becoming Fedor. But uh, it does seem like there's a lot of success available if you if you take that path. Like there's um, uh, the options and the opportunities taking that road as opposed to like trying to increase your ROI are, are pretty open and, and fluid. So um, yeah, that's cool, man. And what about your Twitch channel? Like are, what are your plans with, with your channel uh, coming back after the Thirst Lounge and sort of like getting back on there consistently? Um, yeah. So... Well, after the Thirst Lounge, I, of course, just big decline and, and stuff like that, viewers and then subs and all that stuff. I felt like I was rebuilding from the start. So when I got to Canada in uh, November, I my main focus was rebuild the stream, get a schedule out, put in the hours and continue to, I mean, at this point coming out of the, the Thirst Lounge or coming towards the end of the project, I'm kind of thinking like, what's next? Because going to the project, uh, the Thirst Lounge and living down on the island, it's kind of easy for me. I was like at the tail end of a big breakup and like starting my life over. I had nothing. I stayed in California for a year just waiting to see what was next. I wasn't streaming much because I had to get a job. Mm -hmm. And then when the Thirst Lounge opportunity happened, I had no expenses. I had just told my roommate, I was like, hey, you know, I'm going to be gone, do whatever with the room. I gave up where I was living to live there. So finding um, or being able to live with John and Arlie here in Canada was huge. But then I also had to like figure out what's next. And the only thing I knew to do was rebuild my Twitch stream mm. and like just put in the hours. And then, you know, I guess one of my initial goals was like, hey, maybe this is a good time to try to really increase my numbers and then try to get like a sponsorship. Like I gotta, I have to pay bills again. It was like, it was so nice yeah. last year <laughs> with no bills. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Well, it seems like you have a great project going right now with uh, with John Party and Arlie Shaban. I mean, that's quite a trio, man, living in a stream house. So mm -hmm. do, do you guys like, do you talk Twitch strat? Do you talk poker strat? Or are you guys kind of just like normal roommates, but you stream, like what's the deal? The dynamic in the house is like this. So it's very strategic because both of these guys were on Big Brother. So that's funny. That's kind of like, I think, what a lot of people would assume. But right. then now the other part, it's these guys are like reality TV stars and like everything is very strategic. Right. Like like we, when we're talking about Twitch, it's all very, very super strategic. Like. I've been very strategic, like I enjoy that stuff, but until getting put into a situation here with both of them, where we get to talk about it, like they're super strategic, even with mm -hmm. some of these bets, like this one bet right now that's going on, it is hilarious. I need to do like a <laughs> vlog or something with what they're doing, because there's a lot of moments of somebody will come and like probe me and ask me questions like, where, where was he? And you know, like how long has he been gone? And um, they're like faking like they're leaving and not leaving. It is so funny, these two. <laughs> But yes, everything is very strategic. Anything we talk about is is just, okay, well, what's a good strat? Even if we're talking about eating dinner, it's right. like, well, what's a good strat here? Well, what, do you, what time are you waking up? And it's fun. It is super, super fun. That's I, I wish I could be a fly on the wall. I wish there was a camera in the wall. You know, it is Streamhouse uh, Canada version six or something now. And I could just watch the dynamic because it sounds like a lot of fun then. Sounds people crazy. people would love it. I'd be down to just get me some cameras. I'll throw them up here. I'll yeah. go, hey, guys, there's cameras in the house. Like, Whatever, Drew. And then <laughs> yeah. we'll be off. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect, dude. Um, 
I, I remember actually what you're saying about the strategic stuff. I often use Arlie as an example of a good way to like infuse yourself into the Twitch community because mm -hmm. he was in hindsight so strategic about developing like a base of people interested in him. Um, and he for for about four or five months on Twitter was just like the poker community's cheerleader. He was just uh -huh. like, every time I sent out a tweet of like, oh, I had a good day. He'd be like, congratulations, Jamie. That's awesome, man. Like your stream's going great. And I'd be like, thanks, Arlie. Every day I was reading Arlie Shaman, you know, and, and, every, and everyone was. And then he started streaming, started catching the mm -hmm. hosts. Poker Stars decided to do like an eight month challenge with the guy. Uh, man, I, I saw that strategy. I was like, that guy killed it. He went from no channel to like, everyone knows his name. He's getting hosts. And like, now he's a signed guy like quickly he he's good man he's good buddy he's so good that was all like i've heard the stories like that was all super very strategic every little he's the most strategic person yeah. him and and kmart are the two most strategic per people that i've ever like hung out with yeah like ever like arlie like what you're saying that is actually hilarious to me i can't wait to tell him that like obviously the people who get it get it like you mm -hmm. saw what he was doing and it was good but he like very consciously he he had a plan coming into Twitch for like two years. Yeah. Before he even like He knew it. You know? He knew it. Too. It's great. It's fantastic, dude. I've learned so much from him. The reality TV crossover. I think it's just uh I know that with Kevin too, living with Kevin. Like it was the same thing. I, I see him tweet about Mario Party, so I'm sure you guys play play a bit of Mario Party, like a couple battles. He won our first league. We we had a league before um the coronavirus. He set it up, he was the commissioner, everything was boom boom in line. And he ran really good to beat Arlie in the championship. I was in the championship. Mm. John was not. Right, John? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. But Kevin, actually, it came down to the last roll. Arlie had an 80% chance to win the season. And he had a bad roll. And then Kevin won. And now we'll never hear the end of it. Wow. That's <laughs> a big sweat. That's a big sweat. Yeah. So look, looking back over the, the crazy experiences and the one you're living right now, what do you think the the biggest takeaway is for yourself and like your career going forward? The biggest thing you've learned over your experiences? The biggest thing I've learned over my experiences, especially the last two years, I'm very passionate about telling people, even with this uh, triple threat challenge we have, I've been super passionate about telling people like, I felt an overwhelming amount of like fear come over me when I saw the Thirst Lounge audition video come out. I remember exactly where I was. I remember what web page, what monitor my web page was on. I looked at it and I got this sinking feeling. It was like, don't do this, you know, like be scared. But I was just in a certain moment in my life where I say it like this, like fear means go. Right. So I knew that well, whatever happens, it doesn't matter. I know I just need to do this. So I'm huge. And the last two years, it has uh, reminded me to not let your fears deter you from growing or accomplishing new things and letting giving life a chance to happen it's been the biggest thing and it all started with that video audition one of the ones i don't know if it was a jamie or jeff one that came across my browser there but i know you guys had a few of them that you were circulating but that is the biggest thing because had i not put in that video had i not asked if bill wanted to put me in the main had i not kind of uh, taken like a leadership role during the thirst lounge like there was a bunch of opportunities where I could have just been my normal uh, introverted self and just mm, you know waited for something to happen or mm. like oh I'm scared I hate flying but I had to do so much flying last year <laughs> yeah. like that was another thing that I just like push drew like don't not want to go to Vegas for the summer because you have to fly again or don't not want to go to Costa Rica because you have to fly again so conquering fears like that is a thing of mine now that's awesome man i love to it's hear the biggest it. thing i've learned got to conquer them that's that's good stuff i think that's a great message um i want to touch on this triple threat challenge as well between uh, john party yourself and ebony kenny uh mm -hmm. what what's the deal with this challenge what's going on what mm -hmm. what do people oh, need to tune into buddy. i'm so excited about this so this challenge is John, Ebony, and I's way of almost like giving back. And the way I look at things, like this triple threat challenge is us like honoring the experience that we had with the Thirst Lounge. It's like we're taking that and repackaging it 
in a different way and then giving people like little glimpses of what we had. So we got, uh, so this challenge, it started off or it, it is now basically we are looking for six people. We are actually going to do a live announcement this coming Wednesday, the uh, 22nd, I think it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do a live announcement for who the six people are that are chosen. And then once we have those six people, we're going to break them up into three teams, Team Drew, Team Ebony, and Team Party. And then we're going to compete in a bunch of poker and content creation challenges and some other things. And they're going to be able to earn points um, month over month. And then at the end of four months, there's going to be a, a team that wins the grand prize of 10K. But right. there's going to be a bunch of stuff that happens along the way, like mini challenges, surprise challenges. John Ebony and I are going to have some challenges that we do with each other to earn our team points. And it's just going to revolve around. We're going to have like weekly shows and different segments. And we have a lot of surprises for these people. And buddy, it's it's really, really cool. I feel super fortunate to be able to, I don't want to say administer this game, but like to be a part of it from this angle and to like see what this experience potentially could do for these six people that are going to get dropped into it. Like right. I would love for some sleeper story you know when you expect and he comes up and boom 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 and he makes a name for himself and then he goes and does something really fun and incredible with you know the poker community so i can only hope for that but i know uh, audition it's so tough we're going through them now i don't know how you guys did it buddy it was so hard it is ruthless watching all the to, like, videos cut people to cut people man we had the phone call for you guys too like we had the phone call you know, like 20 people and talk to them and then just be like, you didn't make it. I'm sorry. Like, I don't know if yeah. you guys are doing that, but it is, it's awful, dude. It's terrible. It, it's so, so bad. Yeah. It's a thing. But, but it's, someone's it's really win. cool. Someone's going to win. You know? That's oh, I was just going to say this triple threat challenge is really cool because there's going to be a, a bunch of different elements. There's almost uh, like uh, with the teams, the ultimate fighter element. Mm -hmm. And we're making YouTube videos as well. So you're getting some behind the scenes stuff with us so you can kind of follow it that way and then there's also like this uh the voice element with the coaches and some of the things that we're going to do we're going to have some special guests on and stuff like that and we've already told them you know they're getting some training membership for the entirety of the project and some special coaching but there's other special people that are going to come along say hello pop in give some advice and yeah so it's going to be really fun man i'm so excited uh, that's that's great. So where can people follow along with with this project? Like where can they keep up with what's happening? We have a website. It's triple threat TV. Okay, it will have our current uh, most recent YouTube video up on that page. It's gonna have like challenge details. And once we announce the teams next week, it's gonna have a leaderboard. So people will be able to reference all the information, follow the socials, see the teams. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep pushing it because all three of us are going to be streaming all the time. Every week, we're going to have at least one YouTube video that comes out and that we are going to have these contestants like vlog their journey too. So we're going to build up, you know, their characters so that people can choose. Like I see um, plenty of scenarios where we have like Team Drew t-shirts, Team Party, and then like people are just like, you know, gathering around their team and there's oh my gosh buddy there's so many things i'm getting off track it's so exciting i'm <laughs> thinking about it nonstop every day i'm gonna follow dude i'm gonna follow i like the challenge i like the idea i'm gonna sweat it i'm gonna bookmark the page and i'm gonna pull it up i like it it's a good idea sweet sweet it's a good idea and and how about for yourself if people want to follow along with your journey you know um it it's crazy to look back man but you i also think like this is two years and I knew I know like Drew is going places, he's doing things. So where can people follow you as you progress forward in your career? So I am pretty active on Twitter. That is my main like kind of social media communication and everything is bet on Drew. So Twitter would be twitter.com slash bet on Drew. And then I'm streaming four or five days a week consistently on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash bet on Drew. And so those are my two like main, if you're on there or there, like you're gonna catch me four or five times a week. I'm always talking about like whatever's going on and grinding. Great, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Drew, thanks so much for taking the time and, and chatting with me today. I look forward to 
checking out this project and uh congratulations on on everything that's happened over the last several years dude it's it's awesome to see and i'm excited for the future thanks buddy i really appreciate it this has been super fun and thanks too for your part that you played like you and jeff you know kind of seeing the things because i know you guys had your hand in the thirst lounge experience in, in a bunch of little ways but that has that experience I'm always going to give credit to because um, it has opened my mind and my opportunities. And oh wait, my Thursange tattoo. I want to yes. show. Let's I want to show it. you. Let's see it. Real, yeah, real quick. So my, when I got to the Thirst Lounge, I only had um, a, a couple so things, sweet. right? Yeah. And then now I've got a little bit more, but I'm I'm very much so like a storyteller, and my tattoos kind of tell a story. Mm. So I knew for how big Thirst Lounge was to me that I had to get something to uh, commemorate that. And this is it here. So what this is, is you could see kind of, this is like the Thirst Lounge gave me like new life, you know, a new a new uh, sunrise. Right. And then down here is like the beach. And then this is kind of looking out into the Caribbean, you know, from mm. the islands, like this is that memory. And then I have, you know, Bill's big thing is the diamond and stuff. And I, I felt like, you know, that diamond little rough example, like yeah. so much has changed from this. And of course, the palm trees, we it's were in awesome. the Caribbean. Yeah, that's great. Right? So uh, I love I love yeah. the tattoos, dude. I'm sure we could do a whole podcast on just the tattoos. I see the Twitch logo on there. I think you see the thing bank like Twitch has yeah. been huge. When I when I went through my big breakup, uh, my Twitch community showed up for me in ways that I can't even tell you, like they gave me life-changing opportunities to people who would watch my stream. One guy who I'm really good friends with now offered to help me move across the country, gave me a job, a car and everything to like start over. It was like, it was like a movie. Wow. And that was my Twitch community. When I drove cross country, I streamed IRL. People were donating for gas and they've been there for me in ways that I can only honor, you know? That's insane, dude. Someone's got to tell that story. Have you ever written about that or like done an interview about that whole that whole thing? I've talked about it before, but buddy, the last two years between the Thirst Lounge and what I went through with my breakup and like starting a new life, um, everything, like I've got some stories. I don't know where that kind of comes to fruition. Um, I guess Bill's in production. Maybe I'll tell Bill, like, hey, Bill, I got kind of a okay, Bill, cool story. <laughs> yeah, Bill writes now. Bill writes, yeah. Uh, yeah. That sounds amazing, dude. I, I'd love to hear more about that, but uh, uh, I got to keep this short for the editors who are, are editing at home and downloading on their home internet. Uh, <laughs> I saw a bit on one of the late night shows about how, you know, the situation in the world right now, everyone working from home, it's exposed the inequality in internet speeds. Like, like mm. some people oh my gosh, just are buddy. not up yeah. to snuff. Like they just, they didn't realize, you know, uh, when you got to do more Everybody's Facebook at home, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but uh, Drew, I appreciate the time. Thanks so much for, for chatting with me and let's speak again soon. Definitely. Appreciate it, brother. Talk to you soon. All right. Big thanks to Bet on Drew for coming on the podcast this week. That was an awesome conversation. Really enjoyed talking with you, my friend. Before I let you all go, we have to do our hashtag JS Poker Hero competition where one of you are going to win a $215 Party Poker Million ticket. Now, the competition for this week is kind of an interesting one. What I want you to guess and tweet out using the hashtag JS Poker Hero is how many entrants are going to be in Poker Masters event number 24? Now this is a $10,300 buy-in. It's a 500,000 guaranteed. The first to guess the correct answer, and only one guess per person, is gonna win that $215 Party Poker Million ticket. So that's the competition this week. Big congrats again to, uh, to our winner last week, which was I'm Your Bluff. There it is. Correctly guessing the winner of the Irish Spoken main event uh, from Brazil. So he wins a ticket. You are the podcast representative this week. Best of luck in the million. I hope you win the thing, my friend. Thank you all so much for watching the show. Really appreciate it. But until next week, we'll see you later.